When working with SharePoint, it is important to understand some fundamental concepts as far as how SharePoint is built. Understanding those concepts will make what may commonly seem to be confusing rather simple. Think of SharePoint as a series of sites and lists. First, we have the top level site, which would be the landing page for your portal. Every site in SharePoint can have subsites, as many levels deep as needed, similar to folders on your hard drive. Also, every site can have its own collection of lists. Think of lists as buckets that hold specific type of information. So you can have an announcement list that would hold announcements, or a documents list that would hold documents, and a links list that would hold links. And there is no restriction to how many lists a site can have. Now when you land on a site, you may see a page that looks like this. Even though we may see various items here, such as announcements and document libraries, keep in mind that this may not be all the content on your site, and that your site may have more content than you think. Think of what you see here on this page as shortcuts to the more relevant or important content on the site. Think of them as manifestations of the actual lists or content. We call those pieces on the page web parts. So actually, if we delete one of those web parts, we shouldn't lose any data at all. So let's take a look at what happens if we delete a document library web part off this page and how else we would be able to find those documents. So we just went ahead and deleted it. Now you may think that those documents in this document library got deleted off the site, but they're actually still there. So if we go to view all site content, which we can get to from the left navigation here, or from the site actions tab on the top right, you will notice that the document library is still there with a the number of documents in the library. If we click on it, you'll see that we still have the documents that you saw earlier and that they have not been deleted. It will be the responsibility of the site admin to place a web part for that document library back on the landing page if it gets deleted. And while we're here, you can see on this page all the lists found on the site, some of which may be visible on the landing page, while others may not be visible. Now let's go back and take a look at the landing page with all the web parts. Every web part that we see here is again a manifestation of the list that sits behind the web part. Keep in mind that the information that a web part gives us may not be complete. The information may be filtered, therefore not showing all documents, for example, or may not show certain metadata around the documents, such as documents creation date. That's why SharePoint gives us a better page in dealing with content of a list called the list page. To get to the list page, we can either click on the title of the web part like this, or we can get to it from the view all site content page that we saw earlier. Or we may even find it in the navigation. Let's now talk about the navigation in SharePoint. There are two kinds of navigation menus you may see on the screen. The top navigation and the left navigation. The top navigation, also known as the global navigation, is generally the navigation that doesn't change throughout your portal and generally gives you access to higher level sites on your portal. The left navigation, on the other hand, changes from site to site and is often referred to as the local navigation. The left navigation is usually controlled by the site owner and is used to provide access to various lists or resources relevant to the site you're on. You can easily tell what site you're on by looking at the breadcrumb or by looking at the URL. You can use the breadcrumb also to navigate up the hierarchy by simply clicking on the level you wish to go to. The last concept that we're going to talk about here now is permissions. 
Similar to file shares, SharePoint components can have permissions too. There could be permissions set at the site level, at the list level, or at the item level, or folder level. If you try to access something that you don't have permission to, SharePoint will simply take you to a page that says you don't have permission to access that item. Generally, SharePoint will not show you items that you don't have access to. This means that if you don't have access to a site, for example, you simply won't see it in the navigation, while the person that has access to it will be able to see it. So as far as you're concerned, you should be able to see everything technically that you should have access to. And if for any reason you don't have access to something, you will need to talk to your site admin to grant you access to that item or to that site or to that list or whatever that thing that is restricted is. And your site admin should have the ability to change the permission for you.